How's it going, aspiring session guitarist? I hope you're having a good day. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Dan Udell. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm gonna be documenting my journey as a remote session guitarist. I provide sessions for clients across the world. I wanna teach you how to do the same so that you can earn some money on the side along with other income streams that you have with your music. Now today I wanna to walk you through a brief that's come in for a recent session, which is a lo-fi slash hip hop sample pack. Now this style is often misconceived to be an easy style to play, but actually to play it well and convincingly, you need to really be able to play the groove well. And one of the most important aspects I believe contributes to a good lo-fi slash hip hop guitar player is being able to play behind the beat. For those jazzers out there watching this video, you'll be pleased to know that a lot of the jazz voicings that you probably use work really well in the context of a lo-fi or hip hop guitar style. So I'm gonna walk you through the brief. I'm gonna show you how I approach playing behind the beat and how it really enhances the feel, my choice of tone and sound. And by the end of this video, you'll hopefully feel much more confident so that if a session like this comes in, you can deal with it more easily and not be overwhelmed. So as you can see, I'm using a Gibson guitar. This particular model is the 2015 Midtown Semi, which is very similar to the 335. I'm not saying this is a blanket statement, but I find for this particular style, being on the neck pickup with a little bit of the tone rolled off so you don't have too much treble works really well for this style. Okay, so here is the brief that came through. So the client wants some sweet jazzy chord progressions and has specified that he'd like me to record these to a beat. So he's given me reference beats. It's really important whenever you have a session come in that you always check to see if there's a reference track or anything that you can record along to. It's super important. I'd also always recommend checking the sample and bit rate of the files that you're being sent. This way you can set your session to the same sample and bit rate that avoids the client then having to change things there and remember that you just want to be able to drag and drop things straight into the session. Always put yourself in the shoes of a prospective client. Okay, so let's dive into this logic session. Okay, so first of all, I'm just going to play you the groove I've recorded for one of the samples. Here goes. So the part I want to pay particular attention to here, I'm just going to solo the guitar part now. So pay particular attention to these four chords. But what I'm going to do is put the click on so that you can hear how this sounds in context of the click. So you can hear that really it's the highest note of the chord of each of those chord voicings that's really lining up with the click. And that's the important aspect that I was referring to with regards to playing behind the beat in this kind of groove. It really adds feel. If you were just playing directly on the beat with that highest note, it would just sound a little bit off, not very convincing. Whereas this is the more stylistic thing to do. I'll play you that again. And then in context of the mix, that's going to sound much more convincing. So here we go again. Much better than just playing everything directly on the beat. So I'm just going to talk you through the choice of guitar sound I have here. I'm using CLA Guitars by Waves really easy to use and pretty much sounds good out of the box. I'm just going to solo this again so you can hear. Superb bit of kit. I've not made many adjustments really. A little bit of treble, not too much. You, want, you don't want too much treble in this particular style. Tiny bit of compression just to glue everything together, reverb and delay. But remember, 
don't overdo the processing when you're approaching any session because it's the mix engineer or sound engineer that's going to want to mix that to their own taste. But what I like to do is give the client an option. So what I'll do when I'm bouncing the file over, over here, is I will turn this off or remove the plugin and also bounce over just a dry file as well. Thank you for tuning in everyone. Hopefully now you're more aware of what it means to play behind the beat in this particular style. And if a session like this comes in, you're hopefully more confident on how you can deal with this. As always, stay tuned because I'm going to be providing many more videos on how you can make a side income as a remote session musician. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. As always, have a lovely day and I'll see you again soon.